Great. Okay. Thanks, Susie, and thanks ever so much for inviting us here today. My name's Laura Bigart. I'm a senior lecturer in psychology at the University of East Anglia, and I'm an applied psychologist, and my research area is uh, emotional resilience in applied settings. So although we're here to talk about the student wellbeing app here today, um, if you want to talk to me about emotional resilience in the workplace as well afterwards, do, do give me a shout, because uh, that's what I do. Um, Kamena, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Dr. Kamena Henshaw. Um, I'm a lecturer in the School of Psychology as well. Um, I'm interested in a lot of research I do is around um, student wellbeing and um, transitioning into transitioning to change. So in the student context, that's transitioning um, into university, but also for other people that can be transitioning out of university or in any new environment, whatever workplace that may be. Great. So we're going to sort of tag team this presentation. I'm going to start off. Um, this is the Open Up app. Anyone can download it at the moment, uh, so feel free to do so, Google Play or the App Store. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk about the background of how we got to developing an app for student wellbeing. Uh, Kamena's going to talk through the app features, and we've got James and Ben here, who are our coders who helped us develop the app um, as part of the, the team. And Steve Jones and uh, Adam Ziolkowski from Josie Tech, who can't be here tonight, were also key members of this of this team. So you may or may not be well aware of um, student mental health being a big issue at the moment. Um, it's in the, the news a fair amount. The government's particularly interested in it. Universities UK have set up a task force to consider student well-being. Um, it is on the rise, but it's not actually any worse than um, mental well-being amongst the young people population generally. But clearly, universities are concerned about their students' welfare. So in that context, uh, we were interested, off the back of some of my research, in thinking, well, how could we develop a tool, an additional tool, to what student support services already provide? And we did a bit of a lit review. And these are the kinds of things that surveys uh, for students uh, tend to say that students get worried about. There's, of course, the transition from home to university for young people who've never lived independently. Uh, there's all the kind of practical stuff about not knowing how to cook. Uh, how do I do my cleaning? How do I get uh, somewhere to live? Financial worries, relationship worries, of course, worries about the course itself. Um, and then all the other life things that go on, family events, um, uh, people getting ill, uh, and also not knowing where to get help, not knowing where to get support. In addition, student support services at universities are struggling to cope with uh, the demand and there's a general recommendation that more self-help resources be made available. So we um, thought about this and we thought, well, let's, it would be really good to have an app that could cope with some of these day-to-day -day worries rather than a lot of the anxiety type apps nowadays focus on um, almost kind of clinical levels of um, anxiety and we wanted this app to sort of deal with day-to-day -day worries because uh, the trouble with anxiety is that it's all the little things that go wrong that don't seem to be much in and of themselves but they build up and then suddenly one more little thing kind of breaks you. Uh, so we were interested in how can we reduce a lot of these small concerns. Um, this is a, a sort of snapshot of a postcard. You can't see it terribly well but Kamena's got some um, if you want to look at it afterwards. But essentially, I did some funded research over three years in the profession of social work. Social work is a very stressful profession, and we were interested to know how do social workers cope in that profession. And this is a synthesis of some of the findings. These are the six most effective st coping strategies uh, that they used to help themselves cope. Um, and those were planning ahead, reframing, so basically rethinking problems, um, exercise, tackling the problem as well as identifying the problem, seeking support, not just um, uh, in relation to sympathy and advice, but actually get help with some of your problems, and uh, also um, to modify mood. That's all the things you do, like um, listening to music, watching rubbish TV, uh, that kind of thing. So we had this, and we thought, let's use this as a basis for some of the features in the app. But first of all, we had to get a team together. Uh, so this is the uh, team that worked on it this year. Um, ben and James are here. 
There's Kamena, <laughs> me. Um, and then Adam and Steve um, were our sort of super coders um, who kept things on track. Uh, and Sophie, another psychology uh, PhD student, helped with the user interface um, side of things. And we also had four other computer science students um, who helped us in 2017, um, who can't be with us uh, here today and couldn't be with us in, the, in uh, this photo, primarily because they've moved on from UEA. So I'm going to hand over to Kamena. Smoothly, seamlessly, lovely. Thank you. Let's put this on my card again. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so as Laura said, we started this last summer. We had four computer science um, interns, undergraduates, plus a scrum master who was a PhD student, actually from the Norwich Business School, but he had a lot of computer knowledge. Um, and the, the first point was to start with a. We needed a prototype. So um, the early, what we started off thinking about was first of all we've got these. Um, emojis so it was getting students to start to think about how are they feeling and trying to kind of really break down you know we can all wake up and feel a bit Ugh, but Ugh doesn't really help us understand what we're feeling or why we're feeling it so trying to get them to be a bit more um, thoughtful about what they're actually feeling and trying to kind of being able to understand that because once you can understand why you're feeling you may be in a position to do something about that so the various things so we've got the emotions um, if you can see the tiles at the bottom, the ones that we currently have, we have an A to Z of support services. So these are all the support services that are available, both provided by the university, provided by the student union and wider parts of Norwich. And if they click on the tile, it takes them to an A to Z view of the service cards. Um, but equally, they can click on an emotion to explain how they're feeling. So they might be feeling anxious. Um, we then ask why they're feeling anxious and if they come up with a list of reasons we can then take them through to a targeted number of support. They may say they're struggling with their flatmates so we may take them to look at kind of accommodation support that student union offers or the, uni uh, the university offers. Um, so if they, sl this is an example, if you looked at anxiety, if you'd said I'm feeling a bit anxious at the moment, we then would take them to a screen saying okay so what's What's, you know, what do you mean? Are you frightened? Are you worried? Are you nervous? And they can click on one of those emotions. So say they're, th they're feeling stressed, we'd ask them why they're feeling stressed. They can identify why, and then we'll tell them you've there's a kind of an identified message. So you told us at Future Career Plans the reason you're feeling stressed, and then we've got a personalised message that we've added to that. So thinking about what to do after university can be worrying, talking about what's possible with your advice and the career service can help you investigate opportunities. So there's kind of some really targeted support um, for students. Um, interestingly, with, uh, along this whole process, working with students has been a really, really key feature. And very early on, the students said it'd be really good to get a map in there. And I don't think it's something we'd thought of straight away. It wasn't kind of the first thing we thought of. Um, but they came up with a map and um, both to identify where the support services were but also to identify the wider area and so and the student said to us when they first started a really key stressor was getting your way around campus finding where you needed to be and not turning up late and um, so and 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 it turned out they were absolutely right because in our user testing one of the key features the students said they really liked was the map and uh, subsequently i've spoken to a lot of first years who've downloaded it this year and they said they really appreciated having the map being able to find their way around um, we've also got a tile for emergency contacts um, and, and again this takes them to a, a specific, quite a small list of if, if they're feeling rough, it's 10 o'clock at night or it's um, 4 in the morning, who can they contact, who can they speak to and the primary advice, you need to speak to somebody. Um, it's not an app that's trying to be a kind of a two-way app, we're not going to respond, we can't we're not monitoring the app but we're telling them you need to go and talk to somebody you know don't don't kind of carry carry on feeling this way with nobody there to support you um, so last year we developed four features then this year Ben and James worked really hard over the summer so we recruited Ben and James this summer and they worked on two features for the, us one was a budget feature and one was a planning feature so the budget feature was linked to our knowledge that for students understandably um, finances are a real anxiety provoking especially as they're having to pay a lot of money for their fees now so trying to help students both plan their money so the, the the tile here the budget planner is a kind of really simple calculator but it's getting students who maybe for the first time have got a four 
a figure loan in their bank accounts, breaking it down into a weekly amount. You know, you, know, you haven't got £1,500, <laughs> you've got £23 this week. You know, so breaking it down into manageable amounts. <laughs> um, we got students to generate some money saving tips, just kind of general things about looking out for vouchers, looking out for discounts, not going shopping when you're hungry, that kind of thing. Um, we also got them um, to do some recipes and they um, contributed some recipes, things they found quite easy to cook um, and a link to part time work. And the recipes was important. It was about, because we're trying to look holistically at, at well-being, and we know that it's, it's expensive eating Domino pizza every day. I know we've had pizza tonight, but it's <laughs> you can't, students do live a lot on Domino's pizza, and we're kind of saying to them, you, you know, you need to eat together, and actually there's a health aspect along with that, but there's also a social aspect, you know, so rather than kind of grab a pizza and go off to your room, you know, you kind of cook together, eat together, be together, you know, kind of just feel part of something. And it's interesting, there's lots of heads and nods and you, say you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then links to part-time work. So um, that's, that's been really successful. We're really pleased with that feature. Um, so congratulations, boys. Um, we've also got the second feature, which we were very, very close to getting launched, but we haven't quite made onto this app and um, this um, version, but it will get on very quickly, was a K plan. So this was about um, trying to get our students just in a very, very simplistic way, plan their week. So to trying to get some balance to their week in terms of, so we have students who turn up and they think they've got to be in the library 24 seven. We also have students who don't really know where the library is. So it's, it's trying to get that balance <laughs> between the two that we want you to study, but equally we want you to be socialising, we want you to be exercising, we want you to go food shopping, you know, all the kind of basic things. Um, so it's a basic, um, Ben and James again developed this, where it's a kind of a drop down box, each square, morning, afternoon, evening, night, has a drop down box and they can just identify what they plan to be doing at that point. Um, importantly on the right hand side is also how many hours sleep they've got. So sometimes, I think even for ourselves, sometimes if we're feeling really grotty, it's really good just to stop and think, have, have I, what's been happening? And you think, oh, I didn't sleep the night before, did I? Because something woke me up or something's been happening. And, and it's just starting to understand yourself. It's no wonder I'm feeling a bit grotty. You know, this has happened to me. This, so it's, it's kind of understanding yourself. So we're hoping to get that um, added very soon. Um, and we th we're hoping it'll really help students kind of plan their lives as it helps all of us to kind of think about our week. Um, this is finally, this is, um, so, how the um, L app has been developed is that there is that the back end can be the spoke to any particular organisation. So um, we'll talk in a minute. We, we're not just seeing this as an app that's going to be for UEA. We've got lots of interest from other parties. So the idea is that we put our own information into the back end <coughs> that's relative to UEA, but it can be transferable very easy. And that one of the really important things about the support services is that we keep them up to date. So it's really important that they've got relevant information, but they're the the opening times is correct or the contact number is correct and we can go in and update this really really quickly so that's a really nice design feature. Um, finally as I said we did use the testing on students so we ran focus groups we gave questionnaires um, and the feedback was really positive they kind of like said so they really liked the campus map found it really useful um, some people said I didn't need it but it was nice to know the services were there it was nice that I had them in my pocket and easily accessible um, a lot of people said I'd had no idea we had all these things available. So there's a lot of support available to students, both, as I said, at UEA Student Union and in the wider Norwich area. Um, so they were saying it's really nice to know that's there. And they really responded to the emojis. And I'd been a bit sceptical about that. I kind of didn't know if it was going to be a bit childish. Um, but obviously I'm completely out of date because they all said, no, it's great. <laughs> and there was, because we initially kind of, we commissioned somebody to draw some more adult-like emotions. And they looked at them and went, no, we know what we know what a happy emoji is. We know what an anxious emoji is. So, so that was kind of it was good for us to understand that. And they liked being asked to stop and think about how they're feeling to, to, to kind of be in a position to do something about it. Okay, so as Laura said, it's available now on Google Play and the App Store. We launched on the seventeenth of um, September. Um, we've already had over two thousand downloads. So we're pleased with that, but obviously we're keen to bigger and there's 4,000 undergraduates so we're going to find all of them. <laughs> we've only got half of them. <laughs> but we're going to get them. So and this is the kind of the key bit that Laura passed back to Laura now. Thanks. Yeah so this this is our sales pitch in terms of we're hiring I suppose that's why I just thought I'd leave it till now. Um, but we're particularly interested in working with any software developer companies. Um, unfortunately our 
Josie Tech colleagues um, have gone on to bigger and better things. Um, and we want to be able to move the Open Up app further, both for the student population, but also, as Kamena said, we've got NHS interested. And I'm speaking to the UK heads of psychology uh, tomorrow in London. So there is it's it's very the way it's built is very well designed because it's very um, transferable to other contexts. Uh, you just bespoke it, the information to the to their contexts. Um, so if you are interested, please do uh, talk to us. We'll be around um, this evening. Um, yeah, or my email is there uh, if you want to get in get in touch. Any questions? <laughs> Hi. Two questions. I'm sorry about the first one. Is there any budget for the development? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's not go into it. Um, is there anything um, that you're aware of that's equivalent for, for software developers? Obviously, this, this is great, but it's very UEA focused. Is there anything for, for software developers, the wider knowledge community, perhaps, that you're aware of? Uh, what, in terms of an app? In terms of an app, yeah. For kind of well-being? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Um, You've got, for a no. white no. <laughs> in, in return for some development. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think the the unique selling point, if you like, of this particular app is it takes uh, generic knowledge but makes it bespoke to an organisation, which I think is useful for people. I think it's also nice that it's really simple. I think the temptation mm. nowadays is to try and yeah. make everything. So I was going to ask if you're like going to do something with the data, or if mm. you're doing this, if you don't. But it's actually really nice that it's quite mm. simple and, and not you're yeah. kind of too over the top. Yeah. It just does what you need it to. And that's exactly nice. that's exactly the point. So we were so in conversations we've had people have got really excited and said, oh, you could do this and you could do yeah. this, and you could do this, and you could do this, and you can add all the. And we've kind of. We've, we've held back from that because we said no because what students really like it's simple it doesn't take a whole lot of memory it's they, they're easily accessible and it's straight to the point of what they need so we're going to be very careful I think it'll grow a little bit in terms of a few extra features that we'll develop with students um, but we've only gone got to a, you know we're not thinking about having hundreds we don't want it to try and do everything or singing or dancing and then students won't download it and mm -hmm. kind of lose the point so I think the point about keeping it simple is what users have really liked yeah. and we can tr make that transferable to different organisations. Yeah, but just to add to that, uh, making things slightly com more complicated, um, the, the K plan for example at the moment is not there but it will be able to, um, students will be able to look back uh, at previous weeks and they'll be able to plan forward and the emojis they'll be able to look back about how they were feeling last week whereas at the moment they can't do that um, for a I number of reasons. say 50% of yeah. in their first week mm. felt this, but over time. So it'd be nice to know if you're anxious in those early days mm. that actually everybody feels yes. like this. You know, you're not alone. Loads of people feel like it, Absolutely. but in another four weeks, it's very likely mm. coming out of that mm. stage or something just feel like, oh, this is normal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're very keen. It's been built that we can do that. Yeah, so we just need to get that kind of... Thing. Through GDPR. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, sorry. There's a couple of questions. Go ahead. Uh, that's not very important, but what was the trademark on the K plan? <gasps> oh, well, yeah, it's a joke, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Kamena's plan. It's Kamena's plan. <laughs> no, Kamena came up with it, so it's the K plan. But then we thought we can't have that. So but then my daughter um, uses K as in OK. Like, she'll just say K, so we thought, okay, plan. So that's how we kind of <laughs> moved on. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'm just thinking, I work in a school. Is that something you could see mm. selling to schools? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I think that's absolutely brilliant. And I think, mm. had that been around when I was at university mm. or younger, that would have. Mm saved me mm. it's yeah it's absolutely it's on a not-for-profit basis that's kind of how we have to be set up but yeah. there's obviously going to be costs associated with bespoking to particular mm. organizations so we're kind of trying to build that in and that's why we'd like to be working with developers to, to have that option but absolutely we think it's um it's got a lot of potential so yeah. we've had a lot of interest from the nhs already um other universities were hoping to kind of link in we've had interest from colleges already mm. we think schools would be another avenue and and the workplace and just the generic yeah. workplace Awesome. Thanks very much, guys. No, thank you. Thank you.